Hey everybody, welcome back to Buddy Spirits and Cigars. Today is a very special episode. We have Mr. Stephen Fonte from Yellowstone Distillery with us. And he has brought some very special pours for us to do today. Um, this is some uh, experimental series, I guess. Is that what? That's correct. Um, and we're shooting here at Barrels and Brews. We have our lovely bourbon tasting event tonight at Stonehouse. Uh, all of you that showed up for the bottle siding event, it was a great turnout. Uh, thank you for coming and supporting uh, Barrels and Brews. We had a great time. Um, hopefully, we'll see everybody tonight and uh, everything. We just It's hot, but hey, we're drinking bourbon smoking cigars. so Makes it easier when it's good whiskey. Yeah, exactly. Life's not that bad, right? Uh, Mr. Fonte, would you like to tell us a little bit about our first pour? Yes, absolutely. So uh, years ago, Mr. Beam decided that he would try an experimental series and uh, stretch himself on, on some things that he was doing. One of those was his uh, grandfather, Guy Beam's recipe, which is uh, 75% corn, 13% rye, the rest in malted barley. And uh, this is some of that experimental series uh, before putting it into production. Uh, which is now our Yellowstone bourbon. So uh, the first pour is kind of a, a view from 3,000 feet into what a bourbon distillate could be in six years in a matter of 24 months. How do you get a bourbon to have any kind of flavor in 24 months? You use a quarter cask. <laughs> you use a 15-gallon barrel, and then you char it in the same fashion that you would char a 53, so it's a three-char, and uh, I think what you'll find is it is an extraordinary bourbon, but it, it is not identical to what the 53 would be, but it is a view into the future for a master distiller to see what could be popular in the future. And then we sold it through the gift shop, and the barrels that moved the fastest out of the experimental collection were the barrels and the products that we had intended to make for the future. So uh, it's a good way to play out what is going to be popular in the future and find out what's going to be the next best thing. Well, unfortunately, this was not in the gift shop when we came and visited you. <laughs> yeah, the... The experimental uh, uh, collection is a wrap. We have uh, figured out what we need to do for the future. And we have uh, very large laboratories now that he has access to. And so uh, he's got uh, a little bit more resources than he had before to be able to tap into if he wants to do anything for the future. So that's uh, it's uh, on its way out, the last of the experimentals. These are out of my personal collection, and I brought them with me so that you all could just uh, get an opportunity to taste it. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you for doing that. We appreciate that. Without further ado, huh? That's got a different nose wrist right off the bat. Yeah, it does. Even the taste is pretty unique. Oh, you've already went in, huh? You've already went in. Man, you know. didn't waste a bit of time, did he? Nope. It certainly doesn't taste as young as, would you say, 24 months? Mm hmm Yeah, it certainly does not taste that young. So, as I'd stated, it is not going to be identical to a six-year-old bourbon distillate from a 53-gallon barrel, but by it's a... Unique and different experience in bourbon whiskey that when you're a craft distillery, that's what you want to give people. Right. That's different than anything I've ever, ever had. Ever. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's in its own. You have to realize that it's off the pot. When you realize that it's not the vapors off at the top of a column, and you're going down into the base of the pot where the chili is, and you're pulling out all the flavor from the base of the pot, it's a gobsmacker. Yeah. And that's what this is. Yeah. It's off a 150-gallon hand-hammered Olympic still ran by a seven-generation beam with his grandfather's recipe and his great-grandfather's yeast strain. So that's uh, wow. It's different. It's Damn. very unique. That's Damn what great-granddaddy took for granted. Yes. You're just getting to experience yeah. it. <laughs> Man. Once again, thank you for out of your personal collection. That's awesome. We really appreciate that. That means a lot. Mm. 
talk about some of the notes that you get so they can uh, lick their lips and wish they were getting to drink some of this. <laughs> it's pretty unique. I don't think I've had a whiskey that quite tastes like this. Never have. No. Yeah. I'm getting a vanilla off the front end of it, but I'm getting a deep oak flavor mm -hmm. out of the center of it. Uh, my center tongue experience is oaky, and uh, it's not like new oak. It's It's got a, a definite, with a three char on a 15-gallon barrel, you're getting into that oak. With the Connex container having the doors open on it, that's where it was stored. Most of your rick houses in the state of Kentucky are metal-clad rick houses. So it operates very similar to a rick house, but with the doors open on it all season, you get higher temperature influxations. So it goes in deeper to the wood, and, and I think that's where you're getting this woodiness out of it. Yeah, that's what I was tasting a lot of wood to it. Definitely. Earth. Soft, though, on the back end. It is. Earthy? Is it fair to say there's there's some earthiness about it? Yeah. It, you know, it uh, is on the first floor of the Rick House because <laughs> it's the only floor. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Other than setting it on the ground outside, that's that's about as close as you're going to get. I'll it? tell you a story. You want to hear it? Yeah, let's tell it. We had 18 inches of snow, and I mean, it was a gobsmacker. I come in and I'm driving a Ford Focus and I'm sliding all over the place. I get to the distillery. I have to park up on the highway because snowbank has been blown over with a state highway truck just blew it all into the front yard of our distillery. Couldn't get into the distillery. I stomp my way in it, get over the top of the damn mound and stomp my way all the way through 18 inches of snow back to the back and the Connex container is open. And I'm like, oh shit, we've been robbed. <laughs> <laughs> it's Pappy Gate. Yeah. Oh, We're going to have ourselves a damn Pappy Gate. <laughs> all the barrels are out in the damn parking lot. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. Steve Beam's going to have a cornea. He comes around the corner. Where'd you come from? He said, I had to park up the street, couldn't get in. I said, what are all the barrels doing out here? He said, I pushed them out. I said, why'd you do that? I, I want, want all that alcohol to come out of the oak and all that. And just roll it them out into the snow. That's going to help the flavor profile in the future. I said, you did? <laughs> he said, I did. I said, well, carry on. I'm going inside. It's cold out here. <laughs> He's the man. He can do what he wants. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So we'll have to wait a little longer before the, the Yellowstone version of Pappy Gate then. Yeah. 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 Be fun, though. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, if you're telling the story, well, you, can, help you. you can say whatever you want, right? You're True. the storyteller. True that. <laughs> I, there's just something off the nose I can't pinpoint. It's just so, the same. It's so unique that I don't even know what to say. We're in a Glen Cairn glass, and, you know, Kudos to Glen Karen for making this wonderful whiskey glass. But uh, one of the things that it does is force ethanol to a small space. If you blow across your glass and then you put your nose down in it, you'll get a pure grain nose. Mm -hmm. Totally different than what you got on it if you were just nosing it. And uh, that helps to keep your old factory intact. See a difference in it once you get the ethanol off of it. Well, I wish this would have been available. Just saying. Yeah, me too. It's really. Good. <laughs> I wish yeah, I had too. more of it. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. And then we wouldn't have to be drinking his out of his personal collection. <laughs> right. <laughs> We'd have our own. <laughs> yeah, that that's solid. I I'm not had anything like it. I don't I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's just in its own lane. And it's a wonderful thing to say craft distilleries are here now because that's exactly what you're getting. You're getting all those things we lost in Prohibition. People are out there making incredible juice right now out of pot stills, the old-fashioned way, and we're getting flavor characteristics and differentials we would have never experienced in our lifetime had the craft distillery licenses not opened up in the state of Kentucky and across the United States. So here we go. Well, strap, and you know, in. yeah, the the fact that they just threw axes and chopped up barrels and this just 
float out into the street and all over the ground. That just makes you that much more angry at those people <laughs> back then. True story. They got a special place in hell. They got to. <laughs> Well, you want to move to the rye? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. The bourbon was that good. The rye's got to be that second. much better. I got to take the rest of this. Okay. <laughs> I believe you can handle it. Easy like Sunday morning. While he's pouring that, I think, it, so what do you think about this? I've never had anything like that before, especially that quality and that good. It's possible that I might never have a whiskey that tastes like that ever again with it being as rare and uh, the, you know, the method in which it was made and, and uh, that that could literally be a once in a lifetime pour. That don't make had. me get tears in my eyes. <laughs> I don't have any Kleenexes over here to console him with. <laughs> yeah. So what rye, about this one rye whiskey rye whiskey i'm a big rye Jim whiskey Tom fan sang about it oh one more sorry sounded something like not that <laughs> well that's why he was a singer and i'm not an ambassador so <laughs> so uh what does your rye content have to be to be rye whiskey is it 51 51 percent rye or higher and what is your rye content at the highest amount of rye that you can possibly be, yet still get a conversion. 89. 100%. 100%. How the hell do you get 100% rye to convert? You malt it. What do they charge you to malt? Nothing. Two and a half times as much as you paid for your grain. There's only three patios in the United States that are set up for that type of thing. You lay out all that grain on those patios. You put cheesecloth across it, miss it the whole time until it sprouts, and immediately after the sprout, they flash steam it to kill that grain and to stop that malting process. And they charge you two and a half times more than you paid for your grain on average. What's one of the most expensive grains in the bourbon industry? Rye. Rye. <laughs> what you're about to drink is 100% malted rye whiskey. Oh, wow. I'm in. I'm in 110. <laughs> what proof are we looking at here? Uh, the proof on this particular one, if I can read it, it's uh, 24 months in the 15 gallon quarter cask, 94 proof. Cheers. 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 Yes, sir. It's got a great nose. Mm -hmm. Very pleasant nose. Sure, Nate's already di dive in you on. You know that. what? I'm I'm waiting last this oh, time. Oh come on now! <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to let my nose marinate. <laughs> you just got a little excited last time. That's all. No big deal. When, when Stephen Fonte pours a whiskey, you drink it. That's what, that's what whiskey's for. Yes, it's meant to be enjoyed with friends. Absolutely. Mm. And the canes. I've got to come right back to something to see if I get it the second time. I I'll take a drink because that's good stuff. Christmas. Yeah, yeah. it's there the second time too. I was not expecting a hundred percent rye to be creamy initially. That's the malting. And then when that when that dissipates, you've got that the rye spice and the peppers in it. The finish is incredible. That's delicious. That's a seven generation beam on a still. It's uh you know, one of the typical rye characteristics, the back of the palate's getting some spice, get some burn, stuff like that. But this is smooth all the way the through. Way. All the way through from the very first drop on the front of the palate all the way through the middle to the back end. It's smooth all the way. Plenty of flavor. It's nice to revisit these. Yeah. These are awesome. You forget just how great they were. Well, know? I hope that we can say what you're saying right now and revisit these at some point in time. Mm -hmm. This is this is just in itself is an experience. I mean, this is something that it's a once in a lifetime deal. I mean, this is one of my top rise. 
This is oh, yeah. damn good. Sucks for you. Sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got three quarters of a bottle yeah. left. Yeah. <laughs> well, hang and, on, and hang on. When you're experiencing yeah. this pour, and that that mouthfeel, that cream on initial, and then the contrast when the rye spices hits you uh, in a in a couple seconds after that, it's unlike anything I've ever had. Rye, any bourbon, anything. I've never had anything with that that strong of a contrast. That is that wonderful at the same time. It's this is fantastic. It's extremely hard to make. It uh, every two uses of the still, you got to clean it completely out. It's uh, labor intensive to make a hundred percent rye, but um, the result is just incredible. Yeah, this is solid. I wish you guys could sell this on the shelf. I would. Well, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's well rounded though. I mean, it doesn't really leave you wanting any more. Yeah, or you know, you're it's not longing for something else. Making me want a lot more. It's, yeah, I mean, you want more you in your want glass. More. <laughs> it's not yeah. missing anything. Yeah, as far as the flavor profile goes, it's it's not missing anything. It's very well rounded. It just coats your mouth and your palate, and just it's it's wholesome goodness yeah. in a glass. I think he's probably going to like that. Yeah. I've gotten two uh, off-the-camera points for, for that second pour. you got to figure out some way to do this again. <laughs> Technology has advanced a long way, so we got to figure something out. <laughs> I'd like to experience that in a... 53 gallon barrel after about six years oh yeah oh man can you imagine oh i mean i, I can dream <laughs> <laughs> maybe you can sweet talk your boss you know be some sweet talking he's tough yeah <laughs> you know, buy him a massage or something you know and catch him at a weak moment that's when you have to do it and record it listen boss you said it right here i got it on tape you know <laughs> You could always use the dog sitting uh, in the near future as, as part of the, exactly. the negotiation. <laughs> Leverage. Those are good dogs, too. I've uh, never met chows that really don't want to tear your leg off or something, and those are some of the friendliest chows. Mm -hmm. I think his eighth rescue is Case, and in every one of the chows that he's ever owned, the only thing that you need to do with a chow chow is treat it with respect, give it its own integrity, understand that it's not a normal dog as far as the way a dog acts. The chow is very similar to a cat. They have their own needs and wants, and uh, you can't force anything on them because they're very strong-headed. And those are things that I've learned from watching Stephen Beam train these dogs. And uh, he has the patience and uh, that's what you have to have when you have a chow chow. It's just lots of patience and, and love. And these dogs were brought up with patience and love, and they've greeted every guest that we've had at our distillery. Mm -hmm. And they are sweet as all day is long. Uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with the breed of chow chow. It's just the owner and the way they treat them. Hmm. Most owners want them to obey commands, and a child's not going to obey any command unless they feel loved. Yeah. And these dogs have been loved from the beginning. <clears throat> yeah. You can tell. So you're, did you say Case was a rescue? Yes. That's yeah. a rescue dog. Wow. Yeah, all of them have been rescues. What a beautiful. All of his dogs were rescues. Well-tempered dog, yeah. considering, <laughs> considering. Considering the breed. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah he's a big fluff -a -luff, I guess. He sure is. <laughs> well, if you guys haven't heard by now we got to go visit yellowstone distillery we got to mr fonte gave us a, an amazing tour of the facility we got to sit down with him and we got to do some barrel picks and we had a great time uh, so we're going to end this particular episode of the experimental series we're going to do a part two and have our store picks there in that um barrels and brews has done an amazing job um they're half gone. So um, if you haven't gotten to Barrels and Brews to get anything, hopefully 
there will be a few that survive the night and you can come down here and grab some uh once they're gone they're gone forever awesome store pick until next year uh three out of the four people sitting at this table really enjoyed the 115 <laughs> just saying but uh 119 is has been selling very well as yeah. uh, everybody has enjoyed all of them yeah uh, they're both great yeah they are great. so uh, hopefully if you don't get any tonight you can come down here and grab some more uh if they're all gone sorry we've we've told you warned you i don't know what else to do we, you can lead a horse to water right that's right that's right <laughs> i i do think it's worth clarifying one thing i love the 115 to be <laughs> oh, to yeah. be fair i did love the 115 now that you're in front of everybody the one it was my <laughs> it was my second pick the 119 spoke to my soul as i drank it yeah and there were five stars in the notebook that mr fonte told us to write in as we drank right and to not say anything until we were going to have the conversations at the end that was that was the one for me. Well, you know, you threw yourself under the bus because I didn't mention who it was that didn't. <laughs> no, I, it's worth <laughs> the I, 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 You know, I'm calling it. It's it's uh, <laughs> the one fifteen's fantastic. That that's uh, anytime the times that I bought bottles, I buy I buy both bottles every time, yeah. um, and they're both delicious. And uh, I, I, the one nineteen is more of my style. I like I like the higher proof. I like the everything about it. But we'll talk about that in a minute. The, both are fantastic. Definitely. Um, I mean, it's Yellowstone, so what's not to like, you know? Amen. So, anyway, thanks for joining us this ep on this episode. We appreciate it. Thank you for all your support that you have given our channel and Barrels and Brews. Um, these guys are tremendous. We've, we've become very good friends, and uh, we even travel together. So, um, Almost like family. Almost. You know? Uh, but we've enjoyed everything. Mr. Fonte, thank you for coming down here and gracing us with your presence and bringing this awesome experimental series. Uh, otherwise, we would never in a lifetime had a chance to try that very good glad i could do it yes sir all right we'll catch you guys on the next one thanks for joining us we'll see you <laughs>